Well, hello everyone, and welcome once again to Blogatas. I'm Phil Ramsey, and in this Bible Truth series, we go through the Word together, chapter and verse. And we are in um, Psalm 119. I've been looking forward to this one, longest chapter in the Bible. Psalm 119 has a lot of awesome things to say. Uh, I'll go ahead and give you the things I have highlighted out before we get it too far into this. So in uh, verse 95, we have one word highlighted. And then, I guess that's it, just the one word. And uh, that's just, a, we're just changing that to a synonym so that we can, um, so it's not so graphic. And uh, so, yeah, Psalm 119 is an acrostic psalm. Um, it, 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 you, it's set up uh, so that it is divided into uh, phrases or sections that start with, each each phrase starts with uh, uh, a a letter of the Hebrew alphabet, and then it goes through the different letters. And so they actually in the NLT here, New Living Translation, they have uh, they have the word written out, um, you know, transliterated from the Hebrew. And so my pronunciation might not be wonderful. I've never gone to Hebrew school. I don't know. Uh, someday I would like to study Hebrew, but. Uh, anyway, it, uh, at this point, uh, you know, it's just uh, anybody's anybody's guess, on, at least on this side of the screen, it's anybody's guess as to whether or not I'm pronouncing it properly. That's okay, because we'll just go through it. Um, and so let's go ahead and pray. Father, I thank you for this word. I thank you that this word is a, uh, a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path, that your word has uh, has. Uh, the ability to preserve my life from destruction, uh, and if it uh, if it's true for my life, it's also true for the lives of all those who tune in here with me. I ask that you give us all discernment, teach us uh, your ways, and give us the revelation of uh, the things you want us to understand. And I thank you for these things. And in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Okay, so we got to approach God's word with a tender heart. Receive of what he has for us. So then uh, in Psalm 119, Aleph, verse 1, joyful are those, or excuse me, joyful are people of integrity who follow the instructions of the Lord. Joyful are those who obey his laws and search for him with all their hearts. They do not compromise with evil and they walk only in his paths. You have charged us to keep your commandments carefully. Now again, um, you know we see in the Word a lot where it talks about His God's commandments, His decrees, His regulations, and those are all words that have um, a specific application. And it's not bad that the that the translators have this, but it's really overall, you know, it's God's words. You know, and so it's not so much uh, commandments. It, his words contain commandments. His words contain laws and decrees. His words contain instruction and reproof. His words contain comfort. His words contain life. Jesus said, the words I speak to you are spirit and they are life. And so, you know, we, we shouldn't look at it as uh, when it says, keep your commandments carefully because it's possible to keep a commandment but it's also possible to keep a word and so it's really good to look at it in an overall sense um, I mean we call it English speakers call it the Ten Commandments but the better translation would be the Ten Words the, the words to live by you know and so um, you know so as not to put ourselves under a bondage it's the letter of the law that kills, but the spirit of the law brings life. The spirit gives life. So we have to understand that uh, all of God's commands, you know, when we look back at, uh, you know, starting with those ten, those first ten words that God gave, those those ten commandments that God gave to Moses, all of them are, are telling us to refrain from doing harm. So it's possible to keep those words and, you know, to endeavor to not do harm. Uh, endeavor to please God, you know, um, and that will that will keep our foot on the right path. And so he said, keep 
you know, keep the, these commands carefully, or you could say with care. So to treasure up God's word in my heart and to, and to, um, to uh, take care to live it out, you know, is to keep it, is to keep his word. So then verse five, oh, my, that my actions would consistently reflect your decrees. Then I will not be ashamed when I compare my life with your commands. As I learn your righteous regulations, I will thank you by living as I should. I will obey your decrees. Please don't give up on me. And so these two, those two uh, verse, verses here are very encouraging to me, you know, because we feel like we fail in so many areas. But when he says, as I learn your right regulations, your righteous regulations, I will thank you, or out of gratitude, I will live as I should. So I will, uh, so as, a, as an act of gratitude, as an act of thankfulness to God, I will live to please him, to thank him for giving me his word to live by. And so he says, I will obey your decrees. Please don't give up on me. You know, why does he say that? Because he knows he's going to make a mistake here and there. But he's like, please don't give up on me, God. I, I want to please you, you know. And so this this is great. This this is why in the book of Hebrews it says we have a, Jesus is our great high priest. says we have a great high priest who can empathize with us because he also walked the earth as a man. And he knows what what it is to endure temptation. He never sinned, but he was tempted. Otherwise, he couldn't have. Uh, he couldn't have been our perfect sacrifice. So uh, we know he was tempted. And so the and so the the when I encounter temptation, I must be aware that I have not sinned yet. I have now encountered temptation, and I'm at a crossroads. And if I give in to temptation, then I sin. But if I shun the temptation, if I recognize it for what it is and say, no, I'm not going to do that, then I have endured temptation and I have moved along without sinning. And so uh, we have these crossroads that constantly come up in our lives, you know, and so the psalmist is like he recognizing this and he's saying, please don't give up on me, God. Please don't give up on me. I'm, 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 I'm trying to live as I should. So then uh, we don't get bogged down in, you know, that's why I talked about this a lot because you, you you don't want to get bogged down in just trying to not sin. That's not what it's about. But as I love God's word and as I give it attention and as I value it and treasure it up in my heart and I walk it out with him and I live to please him, then I am free. His word sets me free. And so then when temptation comes, it's easy to say, no, no, it's far better to, to walk with God than to stray off on a different path. Okay, so moving on. Beth, verse 9. How can a young person stay pure? By obeying your word. I have tried hard to find you. Don't let me wander from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. And so you see that he says, don't let me wander from your commands. Now he, so... There's people, I, you know, I've seen people that, that you know, they come up and they like pray that I won't do this thing. No, 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 no. You know, God's not going to override our will. We're not, he's not going to keep us from doing something. But when he says, don't let me wander from your commands, you know, he is, he is saying, I, it, the, the, the implication is, is that he is putting forth the effort and he is asking God to help him in his effort to, to stay on his path, to stay on God's path. That we can ask for. We can ask God, help me when, when, I, when I recognize that I'm being tempted. Help me. Help me to see when I'm being tempted. Help me to not get off, uh, on, off into the weeds, so to speak. Help me to stay on the path. And he will. Because the word says in the New Testament that he's able to keep our feet from slipping. So, in other words, it's that helping hand that reaches out. He reaches out to help us when we fall. He is there to catch us if we're willing to yield to him. So, it's a, it's a, uh, 
it's a uh, joint effort. It's not a, oh, God's going to do everything for me. No, it's a joint effort is really all I was trying to get at right there. So verse 12, I will praise you, O Lord. Teach me your decrees. I have recited aloud all the regulations you have given us. I have rejoiced in your laws as much as in riches. I will study your commandments and reflect on your ways. I will delight in your decrees and not forget your word. So that's a, um, you know, an interesting statement. I've said it out loud. I, you know, uh, I believe so I spoke. You know, I will, I will speak out God's words and uh, let them then become my words. Uh, come into agreement. So then, uh, moving on. Gamel, verse 17. Be good to your servant, that I may live and obey your word. Open my eyes to see the wonderful truths of in your instructions. I am only a foreigner in the land, just passing through life is but a breath. Don't hide your commands from me. I am always overwhelmed with a desire for your regulations. You rebuke the arrogant. Those who wander from your commands are cursed. Don't let them scorn and insult me, for I have obeyed your laws. Even princes sit and speak against me, but I will meditate on your decrees. Your laws please me. They give me wise advice. So yeah, meditation. Uh, and I mentioned it before, you know, I had an interesting conversation with a friend one time, and we were talking about meditation, and we were talking about the kind of meditation that, that people are into these days, that where they try to empty their mind. But that's not, you know, he, he in, in, as we were talking about that, he just made the statement, he just said, well, that's, you know, he's like, Christian meditation is different. And uh, I was like, you're right, you know, Christian meditation is, uh, thinking on contemplating on God's word is not emptying the mind it is filling the mind with the word of God you know um, and so in, in, in mulling it over and thinking about it and if you look in the Hebrew the word meditate means to to uh, mutter to oneself to pray to sing uh, so to um, speak aloud to myself the word of God and and let it fill my thinking you know, and uh, yeah, so that's the type of meditation that we find in the Bible. <clears throat> okay, uh, Daleth, I lie in the in the dust. Revive me by your word. I told you my plans, and you answered. Now teach me your decrees. Help me understand the meaning of your commandments, and I will meditate on your wonderful deeds. I weep with sorrow. Encourage me by your word. Keep me from lying to myself. Give me the privilege of knowing your instructions. I have chosen to be faithful. I have determined to live by your regulations. I cling to your laws. Don't let me be put to shame. I will pursue your commands, for you expand my understanding. So he expands our understanding by his word. You know, and Jesus actually said that to take care what you are hearing. He said that to those who are hearing what I am saying, more understanding will be given, given by who? by God. So to value God's word enough to uh, to hear it and meditate upon it and think about it and and ponder it and examine the meaning of it, and uh, that that then uh, as a reward, God will give me more understanding. He will expand my understanding because I've been faithful with a, a little bit. He will give me more. And, and and so I like how he, he's saying, he's like, he's talking about how God's word is the remedy for all of the uh, the conditions of man that we find distasteful. You know, it's like, I lie in the dust. Revive me by your word. You know, so it's like the, God's word is the answer. So I lie in the dust. God, your word is the answer. I told you my plans in my thinking. But your word is the answer. Your you teach me your decrees, and then he's like, I weep with sorrow. So encourage me by your word. You know, um, and so it's just it's uh, so he's he's he is allowing the the word of God to meet the needs of man. Okay. So then looking down here, hey, that's the letter. Hey, <laughs> verse thirty-three. Teach me your decrees, O Lord. I will keep them to the end. He will he, give me understanding, excuse me, give me understanding, and I will obey your instructions. 
I will put them into practice with all my heart. Make me walk along the path of your commands, for that is where my happiness is found. Give me an eagerness for your laws rather than a love for money. Remember, the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Verse 37, turn my eyes from worthless things and give me life through your word. Reassure me of your promise made to those who fear you. Help me abandon my shameful ways, for your regulations are good. I long to obey your commandments. Renew my life with your goodness. Law, verse 41, Lord, give me your unfailing love and the salvation that you promised me. Wow, you know, and again, the New Testament says the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts. We have it in us. And so then, uh, faith works through love. So if we are walking in love, then our faith is going to work to its full potential. But then there's also that uh, that unfailing love that that pours out of us. In other words, then we are faithful with the love that he has given us. Then what is inside will then come out. Okay, so verse 42, Then I can answer those who taunt me, for I trust in your word. Do not snatch your word of truth from me, for your regulations are my only hope. I will keep on obeying your instructions forever and ever. I will walk in freedom, for I have devoted myself to your commandments. God's word set us free. I will speak to kings about your laws, and I will not be ashamed. How I delight in your commands, how I love them. I honor and love your commands. I meditate on your decrees. Zayn, verse 49. Remember your promise to me. It is my only hope. Your promise revives me. It comforts me in all my troubles. See, promise again uh, is a word. So again, what these are all things that are encompassed by his word. Uh, decrees, regulations, laws, commandments, promises, you know. Verse 51, the proud hold me in utter contempt, but I do not turn away from your instructions. I meditate on your age-old regulations. O Lord, they comfort me. I become furious with the wicked because they reject your instructions. Your decrees have been the theme of my songs wherever I have lived. I reflect at night on who you are, O Lord. Therefore, I obey your instructions. This is how I spend my life, obeying your commandments. Heth, verse 57. Lord, you are mine. I promise to obey your words. With all my heart, I want your blessings. Be merciful as you promised. I pondered the direction of my life, and I turned to follow your laws. This is um, repentance, to turn back from a way and to follow a different way. To repent, to, to turn back from a path that leads to death and to follow after Jesus, who leads to life. Verse 60, I will hurry without delay to obey your commands. Evil people try to drag me into sin, but I am firmly anchored to your instructions. I rise at midnight to thank you for your just regulations. I am a friend to anyone who fears you, anyone who obeys your commandments. O Lord, your unfailing love fills the earth. Teach me your decrees. You know, and and just a thought here, you know, uh, people can look around and they can say, well, the, the world is full of all kinds of terrible things. There's all kinds of evil in the world. The psalmist is saying, look around. God's unfailing love is clearly seen throughout the world. You know, when you think about it, and there's lots of people who want to say that God's not just, but the truth of the matter is, is that if God was not just, we wouldn't even have a concept of what justice is. And so just the fact that we are aware that there is good is proof that God exists. You know. So then, Teth, verse 65. You have done many good things for me, O Lord, Lord, just as you promised. I believe in your commands. Now teach me good judgment and knowledge. I used to wander off until you disciplined me, but now I closely follow your word. You are good. And do only good. Teach me your decrees. Arrogant people smear me with lies. 
but in truth I obey your commandments with all my heart. Their hearts are dull and stupid, but I delight in your instructions. My suffering was good for me, for it taught me to pay attention to your decrees. Your instructions are more valuable to me than millions in gold and silver. I'm thinking about a time, because the word says in the book of James that it says, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives uh, who gives liberally and without reproach, right? So God doesn't get mad at us. He doesn't give us a hard time for asking for his help and for asking us to, or asking him to instruct us. And so, you know, we can be very specific in what we're asking for. He's, he's giving very general statements about, Lord, teach me your de decrees. Teach me wisdom. Teach me discernment. Teach me good judgment. You know, and so um, really, you know, we, we should be, yeah, we should ask for these things, but it doesn't hurt to get specific if we have a specific thing, if any of you lacks wisdom. So in what area am I lacking wisdom? You know, what thing do I need his help? Well, what thing do I need his insight, his his instructions, his notions, ideas? Uh, what, in what area? And, you know, I asked him one time, um, you know, I was, I was dealing, you know, a young father and I was going through a hard time of not knowing how to be a good father. I didn't, I, you know, I didn't, I didn't know. And so when I came to a breaking point, um, you know, I was walking, you know, and just doing the best I could, but not, but not, did not have enough sense to ask God for his help. And when it dawned on me that I needed his help, I said, Lord, you are the best father that has ever existed teach me how to be a good father. And he said, what you've asked for is good. I was so surprised that he just, he, he, it was like he immediately, and it's like not an audible voice, but I, but I, but he was speaking. And, uh, he said, what you've asked for is good. And he said, let your children see you, uh, sing and praise and worship and let them see you praying. Let them see you reading the Bible, you know, because you know, and, and he, that's, that's all he said, you know, but the point is, is that be that visual example. In other words, this is wisdom for one who wants to be an example for others, you know, be a visible uh, representation of one who delights in this, who, who values this, and that will teach those who observe to value this. You know, and so that's just one example. That was one specific area that I needed wisdom in that I asked him for, and he was faithful to help me. Okay, moving on. Um, Yod, verse 73. You made me. You created me. Now, give me the sense to follow your commands. May all who fear you uh, find in me a cause for joy, for I have put my hope in your word. I know, O Lord, that your regulations are fair. You disciplined me because I needed it. Now let your unfailing love comfort me, just as you promised me, your servant. Surround me with your tender mercies so I may live, for your instructions are my delight. Bring disgrace upon the arrogant people who lied about me. Meanwhile, I will concentrate on your commandments. Let me be united with all who fear you. There's some wisdom there here, so, or, or there's some wisdom here to understand. Is that he is like you know yeah we don't we don't uh, ask God to let disgrace them. we're in the, the age of grace here so we don't ask God to let disgrace fall upon um, arrogant people who lie about us and do things Jesus said pray for those who curse you so I can pray and speak a blessing over them but he's like meanwhile I'll be over here spending time in your word so it's like I'm not gonna let their attitude or what they have done to me keep me from what is actually important i'm not gonna i'm not gonna become shackled to uh the wrong that was done to me instead i will forgive them and that will give uh that will give god that opportunity to work on them and i don't need to deal with it anymore i don't need to think i i've i've, I've given it up i've set them free and uh, now that frees me up to focus on god's word in which i delight and so um, he says, verse 79, Let me be united with all who fear you, with those who know your laws. May I be blameless in keeping your decrees. Then I will never be ashamed. Calf, verse 81, I am worn out waiting for your rescue, but I have put my hope in your word. 
My eyes are straining to see your promises come true. When will you comfort me? I am shriveled like a wineskin in the smoke, but I have not forgotten to obey your decrees. How long must I wait? When will you punish those who persecute me? These arrogant people who hate your instructions have dug deep pits to trap me. All your commands are trustworthy. Protect me from those who hunt me without uh, hunt me down without a cause. They almost finished me off, but I refuse to abandon your commandments. In your unfailing love, spare my life. Then I can continue to obey your laws. Lamed, verse 89. Your eternal word, O Lord, stands firm in heaven. Your faithfulness extends to every generation, as enduring as the earth you created. Your regulations remain true to this day, for everything serves your plans. If your instructions hadn't sustained me with joy, I would have died in my misery. I will never forget your commandments, for by them you give me life. I am yours, rescue me, for I have worked hard at obeying your commandments. Though the wicked hide along the way to destroy me, I will quietly keep in mind in I will excuse me, I will quietly keep my mind on your laws. Even perfection has its limits, but your commands have no limit. And and he says here, you know, in verse ninety one, he said, Everything serves God's plans. And that doesn't mean that everything that is in operation at this time is God's will, but everything will be made to serve his ultimate purpose because he works all things together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purposes. Because he is uh, bringing all things to an eventuality. Okay. And so um, it's like, is God on my side or, or should I come over to his side? I need to be on his side. Mem, verse 97. Oh, how I love your instructions. I think about them all day long. Your commands make me wiser than my enemies, for they are my constant guide. Yes, I have more insight than my teachers, for I am always thinking of your laws. I am even wiser than my elders, for I have kept your commandments. So it may sound like he's puffing himself up and being prideful here, but he is he is crediting God with 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 all of it. So we have to remember that. Okay, verse 101. I have refused to walk on any evil path, so that I may remain obedient to your word. I haven't turned away from your regulations, for you have taught me well. How sweet your words taste to me. They are sweeter than honey. Your commandments give me understanding. No wonder I hate every false way of life. Okay, so he, it may seem like, man, all, thank you, it may seem like it's all, all he's thinking about is God's word. Is he, is he having time for anything else? Yes, he is. But what he's doing is he's talking about how, how he has prioritized God's word in his life. Um, you know, yes, there's, the, there is the, the common pursuits of life. You know, um, but he is saying that that there is an order, and in the order of his life, he has placed God's word first before all other things that need to be done. All right, none. Verse one hundred five. Your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. I have promised it once, and I'll promise it again. I will be, obey your righteous regulations. I have suffered much, O Lord. Restore my life again as you promised. Lord, accept my offering of praise and teach me your regulations. My life constantly hangs in the balance, but I will not stop obeying your instructions. The wicked have set their traps for me, but I will not turn from your commandments. Your laws are my treasure. They are my heart's delight. I am determined to keep your decrees to the very end. And so, you know, this theme keeps coming up or, or the situation keeps coming up where the wicked are trying to draw him away from God's word. And so there's, you know, there's going to be people who, and he's going to talk about it in this very next uh, phrase, or this very next uh, section, actually, but there's going to be people who are willing to accept part of God's word, but they're not willing to accept all of God's word. And it's like, uh, you know, one time I was talking to a guy in the church, and he made a really good point. You know, he was talking to, um, uh, actually, he was talking to his wife, and she was, having a hard time with certain parts of God's word. And he, he said, he said, it's, it's the word of God. It's not a menu. You know, I don't get to just pick and choose which word I like and which word I don't like. And the reason I say that is to, is 
to illustrate how Jesus, there was a lot of things that Jesus said and the people loved what he was saying. But there were times when he would begin to speak about things that were very difficult for them to receive. And he did it intentionally. It wasn't because it was it wasn't for the intent of getting them to turn away. It was because he said, my words are not my own. Anything I hear the Father speaking, I speak. And so he was willing to say the hard things too. And so there is there comes a, um, you know, God's word has a, has a purifying effect, you know, where not all things, you know, there, not everybody's willing to have every part of their life affected by the word or washed by the word. You know, there's some things that they want to hold on to. That, well, I don't want to get rid of that. You know, yeah, I'll accept salvation. I'll, I'll hear that. And, I'll, and I, I, I like uh, this and I like this about what, what God has to say. But I don't like these other things because they rub up against something that they want to hold on to. And so, um, so Jesus, you know, he's talking to the people and he gets into talking about how like he's like my, my uh uh, you know, who, whoever whoever feeds on the Son of Man, whoever eats his flesh and drinks his blood, will live forever. You know, and he's talking about these things, and the people are like, "We don't like what you're saying." You know, the, the, they're you know, some of them are taking it literally. Other people are saying, "This is hard to understand. I can't, I can't." You know, but the fact is, is it's still God's word, and so it's a part of God's word that is more difficult to hear, and so. He, the reason I say this is because the psalmist has gone to great lengths to say, I love all of God's word and I will meditate on all of God's word and I will speak all of God's word. And this is why he keeps coming up against people who are trying to get him to turn away from it because some of them don't want it at all, you know, but others only are happy with parts. And we'll see that right here. This is this next one, Samek. Verse 113, I hate those with divided loyalties, but I love your instructions. So what's he doing? He's addressing the fact, what, what, what are they divided in their loyalty about? God's instructions. Because he, he, in the same breath, I hate those who with divided loyalties, but I love your instructions. And he's talking about by comparison. He's not saying that he literally hates them. He is saying that by comparison, I, if I had to choose between God's, all of God's instruction or being loyal to those with divided loyalties, I'm going to pick God's instruction all the time. And so that's like when Jesus said, you know, uh, you know, if you, if you don't, you know, hate your family, uh, you know, then you, you, you're not worthy of being mine. He's not saying, he's not saying that you should hate your family. He's saying that by comparison, this is how much you love God. And by comparison, you would not give up anything for God. It doesn't matter what your family would do, however they would try to lead you on whatever other path. It does not matter because by comparison, okay, it's a contrast. It's not It's not an, a literal uh, hate, okay? So then, verse 114, You are my refuge and my shield. Your word is my source of hope. Get out of my life, you evil-minded people, for I intend to obey the commands of my God. Lord, sustain me as you promised, that I may live. Do not let my hope be crushed. Sustain me, and I will be rescued. Then I will meditate continually on your decrees. So, I mean, just imagine, if you will, you know, um, if you lived in a place, because there's places in the world where there's, there's, not, there's not a lot of, uh, not a lot of people who, who follow Jesus. And so, um, in places in the world where one person gets a hold of the message somehow and their family has always has always lived in some other religion or no religion at all. And, you know, they they come to uh, say, hey, I found Jesus and he set me free, you know, and Jesus always causes a, a dividing point. You know, he always draws a line in the sand. And so those who don't want to accept that are going to find it very difficult to to be in an environment where Jesus is honored. And so they're, they're, it, it becomes a very uh, tumultuous kind of a environment. That's really what he's talking about, where he's like, get out of my life, you, you evil-minded people. He, he, he's not, he's saying, he's talking about people who have rejected the word of God. 
you know, um, and so that that's what he's, so let's put this in the context and understand how difficult it would be to live in a household where people are persecuting you because you love God's word. That's a very difficult situation, and that's what he's talking about here. So then, uh, verse 117, sustain me and I will be rescued. Then I will meditate continually on your decrees. But you have rejected all who stray from your decrees. They are only fooling themselves. You skim off the wicked of the earth like scum. No wonder I love to obey your laws. I tremble in fear of you. I stand in awe of your regulations. Ayan, verse 121. Don't leave me to the mercy of my enemies, for I have done what is just and right. Please guarantee a blessing for me. Don't let the arrogant oppress me. My eyes strain to see your rescue, to see the truths of your promise fulfilled. I am your servant. Deal with me in unfailing love and teach me your decrees. Give discernment to me, your servant. Then I will understand your laws. Lord, it is time for you to act, for these evil people have violated your instructions. Truly, I love your commands more than gold, even the finest gold. Each of your commandments is right. That is why I hate every false way. Pay. Verse 129. Your laws are one wonderful. No wonder I obey them. The teaching of your word gives light. So even the simple can understand. It means nobody's without excuse. I plant with expectation, longing for your commands. Come and show me your mercy as you do for all who love your name. Guide my steps by your word, so I will not be overcome by evil. I love how he's like, I, I, or he said, I pant with expectation, excuse me, like uh, um, as the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs for you, Lord. So verse 133, guide my steps by your word, so I will not be overcome by evil. Ransom me from the oppression of evil people, then I can obey your commandments. Look upon me with love. Teach me your decrees. Rivers of tears gush from my eyes because people disobey your instructions. Yeah, because it may look like, uh, you know, he wants bad things to happen to the wicked. That's not really the case. You know, that's the fate of those who turn away from God's word. You know, so he, he actually feels guilt and remorse for people who disobey God's word because he knows that it leads to a path of destruction. All right, <clears throat> Sade, verse 30, 137. O Lord, you are righteous, and your regulations are fair. Your laws are perfect and completely trustworthy. I am overwhelmed with indignation, for my enemies have disregarded your words. Your promises have been thoroughly tested. That is why I love them so much. I am insignificant and despised, but I don't forget your commandments. Your justice is eternal and your instructions are perfectly true. As pressure and stress bear down on me, I find joy in your commands. Your laws are always right. Help me to understand them so I may live. And so here's how, and again, you know, there, there's, there's glimpses in here of practical things. As pressure and stress of life bear down, bears down on me, I find joy in God's commands, in God's words, in God's instructions, in his counsel. You find joy there. All right, Kof, verse 145. I pray with all my heart, answer me, Lord. I will obey your decrees. I cry out to you, rescue me that I may obey your laws. I rise early before the sun is up. I cry out for help and put my hope in your words. I stay awake through the night thinking about your promise. In your faithful love, O Lord, hear my cry. Let me be revived by following your regulations. Lawless people are coming to attack me. They live far from your instructions. But you are near, O Lord, and all your commands are true. I have known from my earliest days that your laws will last forever. Resh 153 Look upon my suffering and rescue me. For I have not forgotten your instructions. Argue my case. Take my side. Protect my life as you promised. So this puts us into a position where we make, when we make God's words our words, this puts us in a, a position for God to take, to take our side. 
because we have placed ourselves on God's side. You see. Verse 155. The wicked are far from rescue, but they for they do not bother with your decrees. They don't trouble themselves. They don't take the time to apply them to their lives. That it's a, it's a, um, a, it's an unwillingness to accept instruction. It's I don't want to deal with that. I want to do my own thing. They're not going to bother with it. Verse one fifty six. Lord, how great is your mercy! Let me be revived by following your regulations. Many persecute and trouble me, yet I have not swerved from your laws. Seeing these traitors makes me sick at heart, because they care nothing for your word. See how I love your commandments, Lord. Give back my life because of your unfailing love. So to so redemption, to redeem something, is to buy back. You know, and so it's like Job said, I know my Redeemer lives. The one who buys me back, buys my life back from destruction. I know he lives. So give back my life because of your unfailing love. Verse 160, the very essence of your words is truth. All your regu- your just regulations will stand forever. So it's the very essence. He's the very essence of your words is truth. The, the essence of his words is truth. And so Jesus is the word. The word was sent, Psalm 107. God sent his word to heal my disease. But it goes beyond that. Jesus came to do more than just that. Jesus is so if the very essence of God's words is truth, this is why Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but through me. No man comes to the Father but through the Word, the living Word of God. Shin, verse 161. Powerful people harass me without cause, but my heart trembles only at your word. I rejoice in your word, like one who discovers a great treasure. I hate and abhor all falsehood, but I love your instructions. I will praise you seven times a day, because all your regulations are just. So is he just is he just talking in poetry, or is he or is he you know being serious? Does he actually count how many times he praises God a, uh, a day? No, I think he's using the the number of completion and a form of poetry here. Because it's like, my praise to you in the day will be complete. I will make sure that I bring your praise to completion. Or I will give you the praise that is due. So then, verse 165. Those who love your instructions have great peace and do not stumble. I long for your rescue, Lord. So I have obeyed your commands. I have obeyed your laws, for I love them very much. Yes, I obey your commandments and laws, because you know everything I do. Ta, verse 169. O Lord, listen to my cry. Give me the discerning mind you promised. God has promised us a discerning mind. And so we need to yield to that promise. We need to trust that promise. And we need to uh, believe God that he's helping us to discern things. 170. Listen to my prayer. Rescue me as you promised. Let praise flow from my lips, for you have taught me your decrees. Let my tongue sing about your word, for all your commands are right. Give me a helping hand, for I have chosen to follow your commandments. O Lord, I have longed for your rescue, and your instructions are my delight. Let me live so I can praise you, and may your regulations help me. I have wandered away like a lost sheep. Come and find me. For I have not forgotten your commands. So it's interesting, you know, his his commands are what render us found. And so it's it's awesome because he's like, I've wandered away like a lost sheep. You know, come and find me. And so Jesus uh, is the good shepherd. And, he, and he's like, I, 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 I was sent to the, to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And so what's interesting about it is, is the psalmist is, praying this prayer for himself, yet God answers this prayer uh, by sending Jesus, and the prayer is answered for all of the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And so he is the word sent to rescue. Anyway, awesome. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this word. It's a very long psalm, Lord God, but containing a lot of wisdom, a lot of encouragement, 
and remember uh, re reminders to cherish your law, to love your law, to treasure it up in our hearts and to meditate upon it and think about it and to walk it out and speak it. And I thank you for these things. I ask you help us to apply them and do them. And in Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Well, bless you guys, and we will see you again.